The other big story this Friday, questions being raised about the future of the investigation into the Steinhoff saga. Author and multi-award winning journalist Rob Rose saying that the Hawks will now have to reconsider who to hold accountable. This comes after former Steinhoff CEO Marcus Euster died by suicide. It's understood the disgraced businessman shot himself in the head yesterday. Let's continue with our reaction to this story. Bring in now Zolaki Mguni, who's Chief Invest Investment Officer from the Bongela Group, and joining us now via our video link. Zogalake, it's great to chat to you on the SABC News Channel. Thanks very much indeed for your time and patience. Yusta, over the past few years, being described really as the axis upon which the investigation around Steinhoff revolved. I wonder what you reckon, at least in your mind, happens next, given what's happened to him. Yeah, thank you, Ayanda. I, I think the first thing is to say that uh, I mean the death of anyone is uh, unfortunate, but uh, it's also unfortunate that uh, the the people who have been hurt by uh, Mr. Yosef's uh, alleged actions actually wouldn't hear the truth from uh, his own lips. I think uh, from a legal point of view, or at least from a, a case point of view, the case continues. I mean, there were five. Uh, 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 people who were uh, to be charged in this case. And uh, as a complainant, I got an update uh, about a month ago uh, that they, they were done and they were getting close to uh, getting uh, arrested. So I don't think his death uh, automatically means that the case uh, is not going to proceed. A lot of work has been done by the police and uh, I was saying to somebody else that I probably interacted with over 10 investigators uh, that were working on this case, and they have pieced together quite a solid case against uh, uh, Mr. Yoste and uh, and uh, uh, and the other uh, 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 accused. So, so I think we are we, we, the case will proceed, uh, and uh, the unfortunate thing is that his side of the story won't be heard. Yeah, proceeded well, but I wonder how worried you are about the strength of the NPA or the state getting into this case now that the man at the center of the allegations themselves is not around? No, uh, like I said, I mean, over the past uh, five, six years, uh, I've interacted with the investigators. They've got a very, very solid case that's based on facts. And, and the modus operandi in, in each uh, uh, situation has been mapped out. So, so whether he's there or not, this case could be uh, prosecuted successfully from my perspective, at least from the discussions that I've had with them. Uh, and the, some of the stuff were things like uh, that we had picked up uh, prior to the collapse of the company, and they, they were able to pick them up through the investigation. So I think uh, the other benefit is that you've had the PwC report that, that, was, that came out that has also probably... Uh, provided some uh, light on, on, on the issues. You also have had, uh, uh, last week, the uh, FSCA. Uh, they put numbers uh, and factual evidence. So there is no way that uh, th this culpability could be uh, avoided as a result of one person's death. Yeah. You know, it's worth also just talking about what's at stake here. Billions of rand were lost, and I imagine those who've been affected by that are hoping at the very least to be able to recoup that money. But also, just South Africa's published annual financial statements have also been cast into the spotlight, given just how long, essentially, Marcus Yuster was able to cook the books and get away with what now he's ultimately gotten away with, even though it's through death. No, absolutely. I, I, I think the first thing uh, about the, the, the financial statements, I mean, I, th I think if you invest in uh, companies, if you manage in people's money, you have to obviously be a bit uh, more circumspect about the numbers and the, the sources, so you have to cross-check them. But I think uh, what, what is also important is the, is the issue of governance. So the board, which was closer to than the investment community, uh, could could also not pick up the, the information. Either it was such a good uh, uh, falsifier of accounts or uh, everybody was just uh, too relaxed. And I think the, the, the third point is that when you look at the whole situation, uh, the money is lost. I mean, the, the, the truth is uh, uh, Steinhoff has been basically taken over by the creditors. So the people who were owed money in terms of debt have basically taken the company over the equity holders. 
so, so we, which is the riskiest class of uh, uh, investment. So those investors have lost out. Uh, and I don't think there's much that could be recouped. I mean, Marcus US had 1.4 billion. I think the claims at one stage ran to close to uh, 200 billion uh, uh, rand. So it's, it's just chalk and cheese. Even if they could uh, recoup money, it would basically be inflicting pain on them, but it would probably not give any solace, financial solace, to the people who are actually uh, who've lost money in this. Yeah, I mean, Steinhoff is going to be a cited, I think, for a long time as just the most grand or one of the most grand private sector corruption scandals to hit this country. A story yeah. also making international headlines. And I suppose as we continue to make sense of what's happened in the last 24 hours, there's going to be reflections about how we can prevent a repeat of something like this in the private sector where the crime can be often so complex for a national prosecuting authority that is struggling to keep up skills-wise when it comes to tracking all these transactions? It's true. Uh, I think yeah, that's why I say, I mean, I've interacted with over 10 uh, investigators because they brought different expertise uh, from different uh, areas of the, of the police force. And uh, it was a complicated case, but I think as a person who, who, who's a complainant, I am satisfied with the amount of work that the police have done and I have absolutely no doubt that this case is prosecutable, even if many other paths may fall apart. There is one, at least one piece of evidence, which was the handwritten uh, uh, invoice uh, by Marcus U.S. himself. But he instructed other people, and nobody questioned that, that, that kind of invoice to say, is it legal or not? So there is still a case that, that, that has to be answered to, uh, and for, so that the rest of us can feel that justice has been saved. But more importantly, on the point that you're talking about, about the, the forward-looking uh, perspective, where I think the JSE needs to tighten their regulations around uh, what, if situations like this develop, how, how soon should the companies act? They both need to up their game. But the FSC has come through with their own investigation and uh, it, it's very sound and robust. So. We need more of that type of uh, exercise from the FSCA. Absolutely. Well, your confidence is coming through loud and clear, and I hope it will also be some solace for the many people who have been affected by what's taken place. So like Mguni, as always, thanks for making time. So like is the Chief Investment Officer with the Banguela Group. Plenty taking place this Friday. We're also hearing from the High Court in Pretoria that Judge Rata Mokwateng in the Senzo Mio murder trial has now retracted or withdrawn those statements around how black lawyers appear to be behaving. You might remember he was quite irritated last Wednesday when the attorney representing accused number one, Moses Bia, failed to pitch without any notice. Uh, in response to that, Judge Rata Mokwateng asked a question about whether this is how black lawyers actually behave. A statement, of course, that's gotten a lot of reaction. Criselda Lewis is still in court for us. We'll continue watching that story and many others here on the agenda. When I see you again, I think that's